Hey everybody, welcome back to another Captain Foley product review. Today we're doing another Eagle Moss ship. This is the way. Wait a minute, that's the wrong franchise. That's alright. Um, this is something that I like to do. I like to do the Eagle Moss reviews. Eagle Moss is a great company. They um, are generous enough to help, help sponsor the show by sending us these uh, ships to review. And what better fit? Trek Yards, talk about ships with Eagle Moss, who makes ships. Perfect marriage made in heaven. So today we're talking about another Star Trek online ship. That's this one here. And that is the Romulan um, RRW Alwal, I guess. Um, a fantastic, nice Star Trek online design. And I've heard that the online Star Trek online ships are ending at like number 23 or 24, which is a shame. You think they'd keep the line at least open so that when a new ship comes in we could get that like I want to get some of the ships from the temporal stories um, like the Ranger class and things like that there's a new Miranda class as well TOS style which I think would be great as Eagle Moss ships but <coughs> I don't know what the decision was to stop making these but it's kind of a shame but this is a great ship so at least we got this one um, this is number 13 as you can see here side of the box you got the nice ships there as well um, but the front of the box is that that side has the ships there and like I said the number and the ship name um, and then some stats and uh, inf interesting information on the side there as well so that's another great thing about the box on top it just says Star Trek Online and then the back has a nice shot of the ship with um, just talking about you know the 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 model and the, the book that comes with it. So on the bottom there you can see some of the other ships. I have reviewed uh, the first like I think three in this series. Um, I don't have all of these. They haven't sent me all of them so I'm just kind of reviewing what I have when I get it. So there you go. There's some of the other ones there. Um, I'd really like to look at um, the Damar class. The CSN-01 is also a cool design. Um, the Edison, the Shran, and the Tholian recl Recluse Cruiser, like, not... Nah, nah. Tholian one might be alright, but... Uh, the Enterprise F, um, I believe I've already done the Enterprise F, actually. I don't recall now. Actually, no, I think I did the Aventine class. I don't think I've... I don't have the STO um, Star or Enterprise F, I don't think. That's me confused now. I might have it downstairs. I don't know if I've done a review of it. Anyway, so that's the box. Let's look at. Let's get into it. Um, so pull up the magazine. Number thirteen. Great shot of the ship. Love this thing. This kind of takes the Dideridex and sleeks it out, makes it look a little bit cooler actually. Um, so. Um, so you got the name of the ship there, the RRW Ralau. And down here you've got some specs or some statistics. Active 25th century, length 780.4 meters, and faction Romulan Republic. So, opening it up, you've got the table of contents here. They don't have um, how to place it on the stand like the regular... Um, Eagle Moss ships do, or the XLs, or whatever, so that's not there. Um, but you got a nice shot of the ship from the top there. Underneath it is where they have the place it on the stand thing, so it's not on this page like uh, with all the other ones, but it is still there. And uh, then you got some great shots of the model or the 3D um, ship that they used to create this model, so some nice images there as well. Going to the next page. Again, same shot of the ship we've seen on the front of the book and whatever, just mirrored. Um, so we got that. And it says, The RRW Awal is one of the first starships designed and constructed bespoke for the Romulan Republic Navy. Also says, The RRW Rao, a new Romulan nation, built the starship it needed to defend its borders and protect its people. So, a little bit of a right up on that um, moving along we got a nice shot of it in the game with the streaks behind it I do like that they do that in the game that's very cool for indicating movement um, 
And there it says, the Alwal's high power to mass ratio allows it to compete with more massive starships and serve as a mainline battleship. Shot of it in orbit of a planet there. Vectored impulse exhaust supplements maneuverability, allowing the Aul to bring its heavy plasma cannons to bear against small targets. Oh, this is what I live for next. So there you go, you got the full orthos of the ship. I, I love orthos. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Eagle Moss, give us the option of getting these in poster form. I would definitely be into getting this. Um, but it says here, data. Uh, well, first it says, length 780.4 meters, crew of 900, commission 2410. And goes on to say the crew of the RRW, R -L -L, I don't know how I'm saying that right, uh, discovered that its overpowered Singularity core could be jury rigged with a defensive shield grid and navigational deflector to create an unstable shadow Singularity at a specific point ahead of the ship as a hazard to enemy vessels. So incorporating some of the um, measures it has in the game, I assume. I haven't used the ship in the game, so... Here is designing the ship, and you got some nice concept art down there. As one of the first Roman ships in a new category, the Alil, <laughs> they make me say the name so often, defined a new visual style for the latest generation of Starfleet technology, of Starship technology, sorry. Ortiz's initial sketches showed he considered a variety of approaches at the beginning of the design process. Moving up here, you got this little image as well. Uh, Ortiz experimented with several different options for the ship's beak, but eventually adopted a more traditional design. I kind of like the the fork type um, head there, but I do prefer what they finally what the final result was. So uh, beautiful profile shot of it there. This sketch of the ship. <laughs> just want to say ship from now on. Uh, profile shows a set of graceful curves that maintain throughout the length of the ship. All right, next page. Got that image there, a very nice image. Um, it says, the final concept illustration of the ship expands on its details and color scheme. I've just replaced the name of the ship with the ship at this point, just because I don't think I'm saying it properly. Top view. The top view of the ship shows larger sections of negative space between the dorsal and ventral wings. And then an in-game shot of it there. Again, I love the three-quarter views of most ships. This one is beautiful. Star Trek Online ship artist Adam Gibson created the final in-game model of the ship of the Aul Light Warbird Battlecruiser. I just... Ugh, ugh, sorry. And it goes into the whole new Romulus thing that's part of the Star Trek Online lore. Um, where they talk about New Romulus. Don't want to get too much into that, but um, you can see there there's a map and just some extra information there. And on the last page, it's got um, its stats and weaponry and stuff. Um, singularity Collapse and Warp Shadow Decay. So. Uh, on here we got the next one, issue 14, which is the USS Shran, which I'm not a big fan of. It looks very much like the McGee class from uh, Discovery, which I hate that ship. Um, this looks like a better version, obviously, but it's it's not for me, man. <laughs> so if I get it, I'll review it, but if, you know, I'm not going to request it. And on the back of the book, or the back of the uh, uh, yeah book, I guess, uh, you got a shot of the ship from the top. And again, this thing looks really impressive from the top, so cannot complain. So let's look at the model now, as we tend to do. How you guys doing? You having a good day? I hope you're having a good day wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And if not, I hope tomorrow's better. Here we go. These aren't very big. Um, like compared to my hand, it's you know, that size, so it's not super big. Um, 
but uh, there is the ship and it looks really good. Those three quarter views, like you can make this look really good from a lot of different angles, but you got the top there, the back, the profile, almost dropped it, the top, so nice, nice little ship. All right, um, so at the front, the beak there, you've got some different modeling uh, as far as g different greens go, um, and a lot of lights up along this curve, this curve of the beak here. Um, on the side, you've got a lot of windows, window detail, and again, different um, green aspects, which look really good. Uh, moving to the top there, you've got some additional details in there. Um, running along the neck or the spine, there is some more windows in there on each side, and it gives us a real sense of scale for this thing. Like 900 crew, that's that's pretty good. I mean, the Enterprise 1701D had a crew of 1,012. It was meant to have a crew of six to seven thousand, but Gene Roddenberry, even though it was designed for that size, said we don't have the extras to show that kind of stuff. So the crew's going to be 1,012. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the back here, again, a lot of really beautiful wing details, line pan like panel lines. It looks really, really nice. Um, I really like the texturing and the detail they've got there. Uh, it definitely looks beautiful. You got some escape pods along the back spine there as well. A um, little bit different colored uh, escape pods. And again, more lights and things just right in there at the, the top of the spine. Now you got these pods, which from the top have some red elements. Um, I assume they're kind of weapons emitters of some point, of some sort. Um, when you go to the bottom, you can see them in a little bit more detail. They're long and they come to a point at the end. Again, a lot of great detailing and texturing on this thing. So I think they really hit it out of the park with that. Big mi uh, middle part at the back there, again with some red accents and uh, kind of like an impulse engine glow at the back. So that looks really cool as well. But just this overall overall wing um, and the surface area on that is super great. Like I said, the coloring is fantastic and the detail, the attention to detail, the panel lines, it's just, there's a lot here for this size of a ship. It just, it, for like the scale of this being so small, there's a lot of detail packed in there. So that's excellent. Let's move to the nacelles now real quick. Um, very unique nacelle shape and design. Uh, from the side, you've got some greebly bits on there and just the same kind of coloring and modeling um, throughout. So on the bottom end of the nacelle, you get to get a real look at the sh nacelle shape. And it's got that, like, added element on the side as well. So, um, moving back down this strut, again, the same kind of detail is carried over there, which is fantastic. And in the middle here, this bulky section, again, a lot more escape pods and, you know, some details and greebleings there. The one thing I'm not a big fan of on this one, honestly, is these support columns they look a little bit wishy-washy and kind of enterprise era they remind me of a lot of the um cabling or um struts or supports i guess that john eves incorporated into a lot of the klingon designs which worked for the time period um i don't know if they work here necessarily it's a great way to attach this part without you know just being bulked out so it's okay i guess um but that being said, I've touched this a few times and it feels, it's very flimsy. So you gotta be careful with those. Um, they feel like they're, they actually do just unplug. If you can see, <laughs> I just unplugged it. Um, push it back in now. So you gotta be careful with those. They could break depending on how you hold it. So, and then just to finish off on the bottom of the nose cone there, again, more escape pod details um, so honestly it's a nice looking little ship I really like this this is a great Romulan design um, and I think we've seen this as well in comic books I think we've actually talked about this on 
Trek yards are designed similar anyway um, in a mission briefing. So anyway, let's head on over to the stand and check it out for the wrap up of the video. All right, so here she is on the stand and with different lighting, you can definitely see the added little details there that we have. I've already seen a lot of close-ups in the video here, but to see it in motion kind of as one cohesive piece is important. And a lot of great views of this thing. It's one of those lower shelf, definitely looks great. You definitely got some um, interesting shapes and designs there, so it makes it something that works on a low shelf for sure. Putting it on an eye level shelf, again, it's pretty good, but it has that early Enterprise kind of Klingon vibe from that view anyway with those, you know, pylons there. So I don't know how I feel about that exactly. Um, other angles, it's just kind of meh. Much like most Romulan designs, the TOS Romulan Bird of Prey also has, from the front and the back, it's a very slender um, silhouette. So, you know, that view is great though, right there from the side with it angled up. Put it on a higher shelf. Again, that looks fan phenomenal, actually. Um, some really great views of it, depending on how you angle it. Uh, but I don't know what I would do differently here, but I'm not sure that those are the correct look for this thing. But, you know, I'm not a ship designer, so. But overall, a neat looking ship. All that negative space, depending how you turn it, gives you very dynamic um, views of this thing, so that's cool. But uh, anyway, there you have it, guys. The Awal. <laughs> Somebody's going to tell me I'm saying it wrong, but that's okay. So anyway, that is it, guys. Click the affiliate link down below to head on over to Eagle Moss to get your very own version of this ship. Um, and if you use the affiliate link, then they know where the traffic's coming from. They know it's Trek Yards, and they know that our partnership with them is important to you guys. So you can also use the discount code TREKYARDS10 at checkout and save yourself some money. So consider doing that as well. So... Anyways, until next time, hit that like button, subscribe to both channels, the Trek Yards channel and the Captain Foley personal channel, and don't forget to check out other reviews and videos by us as well. Until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley, signing off. Bye-bye.